Uh, here's another example of a connected mass problems for grade 11 physics here at James M. Hill. Uh, it's uh, called a Fletcher's trolley. So any questions you're doing that uses Fletcher's trolley, it's this kind of setup going on here, where one mass is hanging over the side, pulling on another mass that's on a flat surface. Before we even get started, the most important thing to realize for a situation like this is the force of gravity from mass 1, labeled FG1, does not come into play in the sum of our forces. The force of gravity in mass 2 does. The force of gravity from mass 1 does not act to pull that mass left or right. It is perpendicular. The force is perpendicular to the object's motion, so it does not have any bearing on it at all. It will come back, however, within the force of friction. So keep your mind uh, keep mindful of that. So this object is going to move downwards. The acceleration is going to be down this way. Just so we know what the direction is, uh, we have a force of friction that is resisting the motion of this and acting to the left. <coughs> so we'll get our directions. Anything acting to pull that M1 mass to the left of that table is negative. Anything acting to pull it to the right or down the off the side is a positive force. So it still comes down to the sum of the forces equals sum of the masses times the acceleration. So in this case, there's only two forces. Force of gravity from mass 2 added to the force of friction. Force of gravity from mass 1 does not come into play. It's perpendicular to the direction of motion. It is not a force that's going to make this object accelerate. And both masses are connected together, though, so we cannot ignore the mass completely. And it comes in there. So taking out the direction and what force of friction is, uh, FG2 is positive, positive direction, so it's going to be M2G. Force of friction is negative, so it would be negative. No more space. M2G minus force of friction is the coefficient times the normal force, and that's equal to the sum of the masses. It's a good time now to remember and remind you what the normal force is. Normal force is the force acting upwards off a surface. The only other force is present vertically on mass 1 is gravity, so the normal force happens to be equal in magnitude to the force of gravity, so their absolute values are equal. All well, the force of gravity is mass 1 times g. So the force of gravity does come into play, but not the entire part of it, just a piece of the force of gravity because of the coefficient of friction. So summarizing the equations, it's m2g minus mu m1g equals m1 plus m2 times a. Force of friction acts to the left, so negative. Force of gravity from the second mass is pulling it to the right, so it's positive. And we can put our numbers in here to figure out what our acceleration is. So m2, it is 735 grams, m1 for 25. Remember to put that in kilograms times 9.81 minus the coefficient. Coefficient of friction for this problem is 0 0.34 times m1, 0 0.425 times gravity. All of that has to equal the masses, 0 0.735 added to 0 0.425 times the acceleration. So the only thing we do not know is the acceleration. So 0 0.735 times 9.81 comes out to be 7.21 minus 0.34 times 0.425 times 9.81, 1.42. That has to equal 0.735 plus 0.425, 1.16 times A. So the left side simplifies to be 5.79. Equals 1.16. Divide both sides by 1.16, and we get an acceleration that rounds to 5.0 meters per second squared. Answer worked out to be positive, indicating it's in the direction uh, to the left, if you're looking on the top of the table. So our answer comes to be positive, indicating the mass is going to move this way, and that is what we wanted.